Voters reject the proposed new fire station in Hyannis. Town Council meets tonight. We have details about what is on the agenda. And the school committee gets a detailed look at next year's budget. These stories and more on this episode of Barnstable Today. It's Thursday, March 6, 2014. I'm Sarah Mannell. No new fire station for Hyannis, at least for now. 381 voters were present at last night's meeting at Barnstable High School. Discussion over the proposed $19.8 million new fire station got heated at times. A secret ballot was cast after about an hour of discussion, and the plan failed to get a majority vote. 210 voted in favor and 169 voted against. The plan needed a two-thirds majority to pass. This may not be the end of the road, though. For the station, it's possible the plan could come up for a vote on the ballot in May. Barnstable Town Council meets tonight. First up, Council will recognize longtime Barnstable resident Lou Cataldo, who has made countless contributions to our community, including founding Tales of Cape Cod. Chief of Police Paul McDonald is also slated to give a presentation on the regional 911 service. Orders of the day include appointments to boards, committees, and commissions, a first reading of an appropriation to buy skate park equipment, and an appropriation for a study for the Osterville Bay School and Osterville Community Building. Town Council meets at 7 tonight in the Town Hall Hearing Room. The meeting will air live on Channel 18. Well, there will be some reductions to the Barnstable Public Schools operating budget next year. Dr. Mary Schakowsky presented the budget proposal to the school committee last night. Schakowsky stressed that no student programs will be cut and that every effort will be made to save as many jobs as possible by not filling vacancies left by retirements. For example, at Barnstable High School, uh, the six positions that are being recommended to be eliminated, five of those positions are retirements. Okay. At BIS, four positions are being recommended to be eliminated. Two of those are potential retirements. I think also to note um, the six teacher assistant positions being eliminated, we are also proposing to add 11 assistants. So teachers and obviously assistants may apply for these openings based upon their certifications. So it really is a budget that is a reallocation of resources based upon needs. You'll also see in this proposed budget that we've developed in-house special education programs, which best meets the needs of our students with disabilities, thus first allowing our students to be educated in their home school and so simultaneously avoiding costly out-of-district placements and transportation costs. So as we continue to prepare this budget, and I would say future budgets, student enrollment continues to be a fluid process. For example, I'm recommending a reduction of staff at BHS, BIS, and BUES. However, our elementary enrollment is increasing, and as those students move through the system, staff may be added in subsequent years. Each year, enrollment will be carefully monitored, and staff will be adjusted accordingly. Through conservative budgeting in prior years, we've been able to maintain our staff, even though our enrollment at various grade levels has decreased, and that's a credit, I think, to the school committee into uh, previous administrations uh, that even though staff, even though our student enrollment has dropped, and you'll see that, we still have maintained our staff and still have re replaced our staff. And we continue to maintain very favorable student uh, teacher ratios as compared across the, the Cape. And I, and I mentioned this as well last week. Everyone knows here our demographics are changing. Um, you'll see in this presentation our high needs population is increasing. But I think what's most important is that we continue to be diligent about offering a wide variety of programs. When you, when you look at the career academies that were just highlighted this evening, when you look at our advanced placement programs, when you look at our Mandarin Chinese programs, um, our arts, our music, our drama, our extracurricular, we're rich in those offerings, and I think we need to continue to offer those 
uh, in order to meet the needs of all of our students. Dr. Schakowsky described in detail about what positions will be eliminated and what positions will be added. So I begin with a reallocation of staffing uh, for optimal student uh, to teacher ratios. At Centerville, we're looking for an additional grade teacher, one FTE. At Barnesville United, a library media uh, teacher in which we'll be negotiating with the union on a new library media specialist job description for an additional FTE. Uh, that is gonna be offset by a district-wide elementary librarian position, which is a, a person who is retiring uh, Barnesville Intermediate School recommending the reduction of four positions. Barnesville United, uh, two positions, and Barnesville High School, six positions for a total of 11 positions. Now, keeping in mind, of those total 11 positions, there are approximately seven of those are retirements, okay? Because over at Barnesville Intermediate School, of those four reductions, two are retirements, and over at Barnesville High School, of the six recommended reductions, five of positions are potential retirements. So at Centerville, why am I recommending an additional uh, two positions? Uh, well, first of all, looking at uh, projected enrollment for K-3, our current class sizes uh, range anywhere from, if we are remaining with the same staff as we have right now, we would have a kindergarten class of about 18.7, uh, roughly a first grade class of 21.5, a second grade class of 28, and a third grade class of 35. Now, obviously, class sizes of 28 and 35 um, exceed uh, optimal student-teacher ratio and would be unacceptable. Therefore, we're looking to add two teachers to Centerville and the adjusted class size would result in 21 at grade two and 23 at grade three. Um, the additional funding requested for one uh, FTE would uh, be in the budget. We would also be looking to transfer one teacher from BWB. And if you look at uh, BWB enrollment K through three, you'll see that uh, first grade, and we're just, you know, in speaking with Mr. Gigliotti today, uh, you know, one of the teachers has opted to um, transfer. Uh, but once again, the adjusted class size is gonna range anywhere from 20 to 22 at BWB. So the two additional requests for Centerville, one would come from the, the budget recommendation and the other would come from a transfer from BWB. A public hearing will now be scheduled for the budget before moving on to final approval at town council. Now let's get a look at sports with Brenna McCubrey. Good afternoon, Barnstable. I'm Brenna McCubrey here to bring you the latest on New England and Red Raiders sports. Last night, the Boston Celtics fell to the Golden State Warriors 108-88. The Seas will be back at TD Garden to host the Brooklyn Nets tomorrow night at 7.30. The Boston Bruins have a matchup tonight against the Washington Capitals. Puck drops for the Bees at 7 p.m. at TD Garden. As for sports here in the town of Barnstable, the boys' varsity ice hockey team advances in the postseason. The Red Raiders played last night at Gallo Ice Arena in Bourne vs. Norwood. The two were tied at 4-4 at the end of the third period, making the game go into sudden death overtime. It wasn't long until the Red Raiders were able to net the game-winning goal and head home with a 5-4 victory. The boys will play again this Sunday, March 9th at 1.45 p.m. They will be back at Gallo Ice Arena in Bourne to take on Braintree in the Division I Finals. Women's Hockey East is coming to Hyannis Youth and Community Center this weekend for the 12th annual Women's Hockey East Championship Tournament. Boston University, Boston College, Northeastern, and University of Vermont will all be in attendance. And you can catch those four teams tomorrow between 10.15 to 5 as they practice at the HYCC. All practices are open to the public and free of admission. For game times and more information, you can log on to HockeyEastOnline.com slash women slash tourney. That's all for sports this afternoon. Here on Barnstable Today, I'm Brenna McCubrey. For Barnstable Today, I'm Sarah Mannell.